Hello, everyone. Welcome to Conversations and Coffee. I'm Ellen O'Shaughnessy, coordinator of this wonderful program that brings about the celebration of art. But art, this exhibit is integrated beautifully with music, poetry, in a way that is wonderfully unique. And we have with us Tom Bellieu, who is an exhibition coordinator. We have with us a curator, Steve Abbott, and administrator, Jeff Martin, bringing together with Dr. Lopez the sight of music. Huh, somebody said, isn't it the sound of music? Ah, yes, but what Richard Lopez has done in conversation and coordination with this wonderful group committee is to compose around the site of art. Over the last four years here at the Cultural Arts Center, can you imagine that? He's composing his music, which he is sharing with us today, around the art that he has viewed and shared here at the Cultural Arts Center. Now, Richard, what else do you do? You teach at Denison, you teach. <laughs> Come. I teach at, yeah, at Otterbein, and we're a little bit late today because if I had a class, I, I canceled a couple of them today, but I have one that went till 11, so I'm racing down here. But um, that, I, yeah, a lot of teaching, a lot of performing in the, in the area. Play with Columbus Symphony a few times. I seem to be their Rhapsody and Blue Man several times, and I did the Gershwin Concerto with the Westerville Symphony and the Bexley Symphony. And uh, I'm running the Museum of Art. It seems like art has been part of my life lately. We have a series there at the first Sunday of every month, a jazz series, which I coordinate and bring together. Um, different concepts, different artists. It could be Ella Fitzgerald one week. It could be Dave Brubeck one month. So um, it's wonderful that the art and the music are there, and the art and the music is here today. It's pretty spectacular. And I, I paint a little bit. I know there's a lot of the folks here. So it's been real fun getting involved in this. And going back years ago, your father wanted you to play the Oh, he wanted me to be Benny Goodman, yeah. He would bought me a clarinet. Uh -huh. he, he would actually lock me in a room for an hour <laughs> with a book of exercises about as big as a phone book. And I remember that quite well, but got me started. But you got your started, and at 15 you started the piano. Right. And studied at Ohio State University. Right. Wanted to go to Juilliard School of Music, and... and well, I, I went to New York for 10 years, and. Their doctoral program was very restricted to, they wanted, you know, diamonds in their crown, so they, did, they were just letting established concert pianists in there. So I was working and, and teaching in New York for a long time, but I decided to come back here and get my DMA in, in classical piano. Mm -hmm. And one of the Juilliard teachers actually moved here for four years, and that's who I did my doctoral work with, so I was really lucky to be able oh, that's to have amazing. that experience. I've been playing jazz the whole time, so I'm kind of a... And uh, last night out, playing jazz rather yeah, late, yeah. Uh, and thinking that it was going to end at 11, and of course it ends at 2 o'clock in the morning. Right. Uh, so here you are with <laughs> us. That's wonderful. <laughs> We're very grateful. Well, you have with you... And I have Bradley with me, a little surprise. We, these pieces were written for a quartet for saxophone, flute, a lot of flute, and I love Bradley's a very brilliant young player, graduated from Ohio State a few years back, and uh, plays the electric cello, and I thought that was going to bring a nice timbre um, to the music. Wonderful. And, because art has timbre, feeling, and uh, different colors. 
we sort of talk about color in, in music um, as kind of an association between the sound timbre of an instrument, an oboe, as opposed to a flute, a breathy sound, mm. or um, and the harmonic implications. If you have a strange chord, you know, like it's going to be a little it has a little different. Uh, we call it color, but mm -hmm. there's a chromaticism, which in music yeah. means. Strange chords with with chromatic alterations in them, and in art, of course, it means chroma means color. Mm. So hard to mm. put your finger on exactly what that means, it, how they intersect. But beautiful. So Bradley Mellon, we have you with us. Richard Lopez. Yeah. Well, thank you. Let's okay. play some music. If that's uh -huh. it. Yeah. Um, I wrote ten pieces for this thing. Um, this thing, this wonderful project, and um, the artwork was so compelling and beautiful. And as a student here, I paint a little bit over, you know, as a kind of my passionate hobby. And I saw some of these shows uh, live. The first piece is going to be um, one of the professors here, I mean the instructors here, Tracy Steinbrook, um, has a three or four really rather big pieces of art, quite imposing, beautiful, chromatic things. And this one's called, uh, I called it Forest Prive. I called it Steinbrook one for a while because it was the first one I looked at. And I think we have a slide of it here. Um, the slides are sort of interchangeable, but this first one's what I kind of had in mind here. And I'd love to get your feedback on some of the thoughts. Um, let's just play it first and then we can. OK. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. again.
Thank you. Thank you. That was one that was, you know, it, it's a, a melodic, uh, a melody I wrote with chords, and I don't know if you're jazz fans. Um, we often play the melody and then we improvise on it. Um, some of the ones that we're, we'll do a couple today, maybe if we are more composed, through composed, as they say, kind of like Ravel or Debussy, I wrote out all the notes and little improvisational patches. So any thoughts, questions? Um, did it seem to reflect the music at all to anybody? <laughs> well, knowing Tracy Steinbrook as a painter, ah, oh, was wonderful. Uh, thank you. I do have a thought. Sure. Fantastic. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> that that could have gone mm -hmm. to, uh, south very quickly, but it didn't take you. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Yes. Um, I kept looking at the picture and seeing the brook. Or, yeah. yeah. Knowing Tracy as well. That oh. I said as you were playing, I was looking at the picture and looking at the brook and hearing that brook in the music. Oh, very nice. I I guess my my thinking, you know, um, was primarily expansiveness. Um, and I chose my meter, 6-4 is similar to 3-4, kind of like a waltz, has a little more lilt to it than perhaps 4-4, four, four, which would be stricter. Um, and, um, you know, in this image, um, does anybody see rhythm? And if you did, what would you think it might be? I, I, I'll answer my own questions. I, I, I see rhythmic repetition of these vertical lines, and I don't know that I saw those in a waltz pattern, but it did make me think that this should have a certain type of rhythm. I didn't want it to be strict uh, in the sense of something real driving. I wanted it to be floatier, so I was kind of thinking about that a little bit and I wrote long chord changes. I'm just trying to give you a little insight into my process here. You know, the last quite a while. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just two chords for the first eight bars. Now the melody went, but it didn't make the mind wander too fast from one thought to the next. And I, I, I thought that would create a little open space in this, in this image. Um, any other? Yeah. I handed you a flash drive months ago that had uh, many dozens of images yeah. from uh, previous shows. What drives the inspiration you know, when you look through them? You know, how did you choose? Well, um, you know, this becomes a little bit of a, a difficult, you know, you, we all have our own kind of aesthetic when I draw and when I'm, I try to paint, I'm more kind of a classicist, r realistic guy. I, I like that uh, a lot. So I did was drawn to Tracy's work, but I also picked some things w that were more modern. I, I think I, I like uh, I like things with a lot of tapestry to them, with a lot of design and um, motion in them. And I think that uh, some of Amanda Tyree's work is beautifully swirling and moving. It makes the eye move a lot. Um, there were a couple of Dare to be Heard, the show with women's art and statements that um, I found those very interesting too. And I think it was mostly because of the movement through the picture and, I, and seeing how music moves. Um, talking about the colors, um, that's a whole thing with this whole concept of synesthesia and chromesthesia, which we, chromesthesia is a little more kind of um, specific to music and art, seeing colors when you hear a certain sound. Uh, synesthesia, you know, a lot of people see colors when they ha hear a number. I, had, I was reading that some, some author said, well, Sunday, is a, every day has a color to me. Sunday is peach for sure. You know, so that's interesting to me. I had, you know, that's never occurred to me. Um, and I know we all think, you know, we're blue, and uh, or if we see red, we're kind of maybe we're angry or we're agitated or 
just activity. And I think that can be, that kind of thing can be represented in the music. Uh, I, I knew a, a theory teacher once that said that the B major was the color purple. And I, I did some study on this, and uh, Rimsky, Korsakoff, Oliver Messian, uh, um, Arnold Schoenberg, and Scriabin, who was full of all kinds of mixed media, the Russian composer. He would have incense and big screens playing with colors on them and have music going at the same time. So, um, but in answer uh, to your question, Tom, I think it, for me it was mostly the movement of the color in the things and trying to see, I didn't, static things, but it's hard to look at some of the great art that we all have had here without, they all have color and, and motion in them. Um, well, let me, let's do one that's a little more composed. Um, and this one is, well, I called it Toccata, uh, Yin Yang. This is uh, based on some of the works of um, uh, Futurismo works. Who is the author? Tyler, Tyler Bowen. Tyler Bowen, yeah. Um, they're just beautiful. And I'm sure that you can all see motion in that, besides the stunning blue that, that hits us on this one. But um, this will be a little bit of a change of pace. This one's a little more written out, um, not quite so much improvised. And I saw it as very modern. And a toccata is a very famous musical form that Schumann and Bach and uh, numerous composers have written to. It, it literally means touch piece. But toccatas are always fast. They're often repetitive notes and lots of energy. So we'll hope, let's see what this one does for us. One, two, three, four.
Thank you. So yeah, Takara, you know Takara. So I was trying to get a little bit of activity in that from, um, any reactions, folks? Thoughts about that and the music you see? I mean, the art. Questions? Sure, I was just trying to pick out a piece of art. I can't see the screen, oh, so I'm sorry. I was trying to pick out something on the wall that, yeah. that uh, spoke to that. The piece behind you, that I think it's fabric. I, I, I can't see from here exactly. I see. That fabric piece reminds me of it. Interesting. And, and the question that I have for you, and how on earth did you both master that? I mean, I'm a pianist. I couldn't do that in my wildest imaginings. Well, but thank you very much. Yeah, it, um, well, yeah, it's just a matter of, uh, you know, um, my process in this is I have, a, I have a keyboard and a computer and, of course, a grand piano at home. So often I will sit at a keyboard, not my grand piano and the computer, and I will look at the art, and I'll, I'll start to formulate some ideas, and I'll play them back. It's like a tape recorder, a fancy tape recorder. And I'll say, well, that didn't work out very well for me. I didn't like that. That didn't look good, but that one idea is really nice. So I'll take that little two-measure patch, and I'll go downstairs to my piano, because, of course, nothing replaces a real piano. You know that. And, um, and uh, start to develop that idea a little bit, expand upon it, and try to start thinking harmonically, where would I take that idea? And, you know, rehearsing these things. You know, if, uh, I'm not saying, but if you go through all the torture of getting a the DMA is a doctor of musical arts, and it's more performance geared. So I had to do two recitals, you know, as a grad student, play with the orchestra and then do chamber. I was doing all classical. So this stuff is like nothing compared to Liszt and Prokofiev. No, not really, but I mean, it, it, it's, it, I tried to use some of that technique that of course I had and some of the harmonic training to get that together. And of course with Bradley and Chris, we had a quartet the other night and um, they're first class trained musician, you know what I mean? So I give them a piece of sheet music and they pretty much are ready to go with it. We need to rehearse, but it, usually there's not much. So it's really an honor to be able to have this rich music community and be able to pull these things off. But it does take, it. you know, I'm not always this, I, can, I think I can play pretty well, but I, I don't like following roadmaps, we call them. We have page turns, and you're going back to the decapos and DSs. I get a little bit, I got to be careful. I concentrate. <laughs> but yeah, I came off. Anyway, I don't know um, if the, that piece with this, I just felt a circular motion following my eye around this painting. And I, I noticed in all of this uh, artist's work, all these little bits and pieces, a lot of kind of staccato movement to me. So that made me want to do this. This is, it's three notes, but it's over a four pattern. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So each note gets its chance to be the, on the downbeat, which makes kind of, what do they call that? An isorhythm or a, there's some fancy word for that. Like, but it's a, even though it's just three notes, it has its own interest because it kind of loops around itself. And I just was seeing that kind of loopy, uh, cur uh, uh, circular motion that was kind of repeating in on itself. So, um, Richard, well, we have a, a question here. Yeah. Well, it's more of a comment than a question when you said about the zooming around or moving around. Yeah, yeah. It, it kind of gave me the sensation of indie cars racing around you know, the old yeah. track. Yeah, that's interesting. That's a good, definitely. You can almost see the cars in there. I love this gentleman's work. It's a cross between graphic and organic images, you know. I mean, some of them are very human, and so others sort of remind me of computer-generated things, yeah? I just love it because it, I, in my brain, it's like colored leaves just coming down, hitting the ground, you know. It's just, and then I think of basically when I'm driving through the country and this and that, I'm listening to this stuff, 
and especially your stuff right here. I think of old barns and landscapes and all that stuff, the beautiful hmm. landscapes. Yeah. Just Does anyone in the audience, you know, a uh, famous Michael Jackson saw color, uh, Duke Ellington saw a color when he played? Uh, oh, I, I do. Do you? I see a lot of color. When you hear music? A specific I one? Landscapes and I hear a lot of things displaying the colors. And um, basically, it comes out, what I'm hearing comes, my brain just gets a lot of ideals and uh -huh. colors. That's the reason I like listening to music a lot, all types. It just gives yeah. me a lot of ideas. Oh, fantastic. I know a lot of artists do listen to. Um, yes. Yes, uh, to be frank with you, it's uh, got another perimeter. It kind of reminds me of a musical instrument. Have that you know? piece? Yeah. I mean, almost like a violin. <laughs> you can see places to put your fingers <laughs> in there. I'm... Well, that's it. Yeah, fascinating stuff. Um, I, a few who are the, some of the other names? Billy Joel, Itzhak Perlman, the famous violinist, Leonard Bernstein, felt he could see colors. In fact, I think he said at one rehearsal after it was over to the violin section, that needs to be much more purple. And I'm sure they thought, what was he on last night? No. But um, let's do another piece of music. This one's a little more, I think, on the jazz-oriented side. Um, and this one is going to be on um, uh, Nor Miss Norman's work. Um, and very, of course, organic natural objects put together. And so I, when I see things of that nature, I kind of think, well, I don't know, when I see wood and shells, I'm thinking Latin for some reason. I don't know, that's just me. It could be the other one was a little more. But I felt this one should be sort of Latin. I call this madera y conchos, which is wood. And those probably are not shells. They're probably paper, as a matter of fact. But they struck me as kind of shell-like. So. This one's got a little kind of Latin tinge to it.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, yeah, any thoughts, questions? If not, we'll just play. Yeah? Is that cut out board? Um, well, those are pieces of bark. I don't know what you mean, the white bits. Pardon? I think, yeah, it does look like paper the more I study it uh, with, right now. So I think, yeah, this part is some sort of rather thick paper kind of prob probably torn or put in there and some pretty much natural stuff the yarn but she has three or four images like that that are similar in materials so I wanted this piece to have a little bit more of a kind of a organic sound to it um, um, yeah uh, you're inspiring a poem over here, and I wanted to share it. Oh, fantastic. There is music in all of us, and art as well. You savor the sight of music and sing the sound of art. Very nice. That's a little haiku you just came up with. Very nice. Thank you. Very good. Very good. On the spot. I, I heard you sing, I uh, sing, I heard you play uh, last week with the four of you. Now you're playing with the two of you. It's very interesting to see the differences between the two performances and to hear the cello pick up what was the sax at one point. You know? Well, he has his own part, but you're right. He, and I almost sprung that on him this morning and said, Bradley, you play the melodies because I did write this kind of like chamber music and a lot. I don't always play the melody. But as you say that, I was thinking as I was playing, what a different sound this is from the larger group. And I'm not, I don't think it's worse. I kind of like the intimacy of this. Uh, we had a drummer last time. You know drummers, they can turn that up to 15 in volume. No, he's a great drummer. But it just adds a whole kind of a, a beat, a little rhythmic element, which is a little subdued now, a little more kind of interplay. Bradley, you have any thoughts? No. Okay. I won't put you on the spot. Yeah. Um, have you, has this been performed with the full cello as well? Yes. Uh, oh, with the real cello, you mean? Pardon? With you say with the full cello? The big cello. Well, we do have a bass. Yeah, we didn't do it this time, but um, it, that's we. It, it it can be done on the bass. That this was actually written a lot of this for electric cello because I wrote, you know, a bassist will often bow so. But I had in my head more of the upper, a little higher register for the cello. And I wanted the saxophone flute and, and the cello to have intertwining uh, lines, much like some of this art is, you know, kind of threaded in and out of itself. But some of it w w is intended for a, a big upright bass, too. But we just didn't put it into this mix this time. But, uh, Richard, on Saturday evening, uh, during uh, the intermission, I went up to Shar Norman, the artist there, yeah. and asked her if she'd ever imagined her work inspiring a Latin rhythm and melodies, and she said, no, I mean, she was absolutely thrilled, but it brought to mind that for the painter, for the composer, for the dancer, the sculptor, once we put our work out there, we lose control of the narrative. Yeah, interesting. It, and uh, the story that it tells everybody in art is going to be very different for each person. Uh, and I think that's true of music, you know? I mean, um, I always was intrigued by the idea that art is there on the walls talking to you. And a good piece of art will tell you many stories through the years. That's why you like looking at it. And the stories may change. With music, you know, it, it's played and it's gone into the ether and uh, ether. And um, the memory of it is there. And of course, you can buy CDs and keep that. But I often wish that music had a little bit more of a substantial, in, in a sense, a substantiality to it. But that's what makes it mystical and kind of 
intriguing is that it's gone and you experience it. Um, I hear um, like journeys in your music. Journeys? Yes, journey. Of well, that's a very a huge compliment. Thank and you. I hear a different a different journey. The road in, to hell. No, in, I'm only kidding. <laughs> in in each one. Um, number two, I was moving forward, and then got stuck. But I decided to enjoy the moment. You know, and uh, uh, and I, I realized that I could not go forward again until I took care of that. You know enjoyed that I see. to enrich my life. Interesting. And a journey, uh, uh, did you feel like it was a, um, a story type of journey or were you actually kind of feeling uh, color, music, harmony journey? I mean, uh, can um, you explain just a little bit? It's not an easy thing to explain. I'm just kind of curious. Yeah, that that that's probably have to say more than sure. We've got time for it. Oh, sure, that's true. <laughs> but, but thank um, you. Yeah, I felt that um, I was looking forward to doing, and um, but I had to stop for enrichment. That's fantastic. Yeah, I love it. Your mind dwelled on something. You know, that's of course with the great composers. You know they. Sonata Allegro form sort of developed, you know, and it's exposition, a development, a recapitulation. So it's, it's leading you through a definite journey and you start to expect these places. And, um, you know, the more modern composers sort of did that in different ways. But that, that I think that's a, that's a sign of a, and I don't, not patting myself, but if you felt a journey, I'm pretty happy. So let's try this one, um, and I'm a little afraid. Um, this veiled threat. Um, this was uh, with drums, and uh, this one kind of uh, sort of took on a life of its own. I uh, I liked the germinal idea that I had for it, but I felt like um, so it. it it took me a little while to develop the form of the thing, and um, but I just kept tinkering with it, and I got a lot of comments on Saturday that people really liked this. Now, I, there's an image there on the on the the uh, monitor. I'm sorry, you all can't quite get immediate access to that visually, but um, any words jump out at you when you see that? Shatters. Shatter. Ouch. Is that a happy image? I mean, you, it, it could be. I'm not sure. Is it a challenging image? Uh, I don't know. I feel it is. Um, and of course, it's got a political, I don't know if that I should say that, not political, but there is a statement there. You know, they talk about the glass ceiling for women. Um, is this the glass, you know? And you know, is that beauty? Is that veiled beauty? I, I call this piece veiled threat. I don't know that there's a threat there, but um, I felt like it was in a, it should be in a minor key. I liked all these little, as I said earlier, I like the circular motions. I see lots of classical music in that and, and active jazz, you know, Charlie Parker <laughs> racing around. I, I like to, that uh, is kind of inspired the, the, the motives I'm using in this one. So um, we'll, we'll try this one. It, they're, they're a little, we'll see what, as someone mentioned, they're, they're quite different without the drums. And uh, there will be some lines that I'll try to poke in there and cover the sax part myself. Um, so let's see what this sounds like. One, two, three, four.
<laughs> Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, I don't know, all those little swirls and bits, maybe just think of some sort of activity. Kind of wanted it faster, but I didn't dare do it today. <laughs> well, we'll do it next time fast. Oh, we could be here all afternoon. I would just like to cancel everything and just be. Oh, well, let me I'd say what an honor it was to be able to get the opportunity to, to uh, react to so many pieces of art. And mm. I, I was so thrilled that I just have this opus of work now, you know, after this opportunity. Oh, Richard. Dr. Richard Lopez, I envy all your students oh, wow. at Hutterbein and Denison. I'll I think I'm going to sign up to Email you. You might get a course. different story from them. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, Bradley, you haven't said a whole lot, but uh, possibly just a word of what it's like to work with Dr. Lopez, <coughs> to play, to be. Well, uh, one of the things that, that I'm very fortunate about that I really enjoy is that I get a chance to play with a lot of different musicians in town. And uh, it seems like within a given month, I'll, I'll get to use a couple different instruments. I'll just play in uh, several different styles. And uh, especially with, uh, with jazz musicians, especially as a bass player working with piano players, it's very fascinating. Because uh, you really, you know, because you're working together with somebody, you have you have to be working together on harmony, especially when you're improvising. You got to be listening to each other. You got to be reacting to each other. Uh -huh. So you get to know the personalities of different uh, different piano players very well yes. as a bass player. And uh, so it's fascinating to me. And uh, I have to admit, uh, Richard's one of my favorite people to play in town within town, but he's also to me one of the more challenging. One of the ones I couldn't figure out right away. I, I, <laughs> it took me a little bit, you know, I was like, wait, okay, the things I'm playing that work with that other piano player aren't working here. Why is that? What, what does he want that's different? You know, I had to, you know, kind of rethink a little bit. And, uh, but getting to play this music in particular, and obviously there, there's more, uh, there's a combination of some improvisation and some written out material here. But uh, this has been a, a blast just because it's uh, some interesting, challenging it's music. And it's, uh, you know, I, I don't always, as I said, I get the opportunity to play a lot of things, but I always get the opportunity to, uh, to play something where, where somebody had a chance to put some preparation into it and, uh, and present me with you know, a, a challenge. It's really interesting to have You to do uh, magnificently. It's so soul felt with both of you. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for coming today. Um, you know, come up and say hello afterwards. Thank you so much. Yes.